What's up gang? So today we are going to be doing a pour and we're actually pouring a very important sculpture and it is a uh, sculpture of a goat and a soldier sculpted by a brilliant sculptor called Nick Elphick based in North Wales. We've had the privilege of actually casting, doing the wax and mould making this piece. It's being unveiled on the 18th of March. These are all the sections of the goat and the actual soldier itself. You can see the lapels, the shoulders, the neck of the goat, the horns of the goat. So the next couple days, we're gonna be pouring like crazy. So what I'm gonna do now is I've just put a load of bronze in the actual furnace. But as that furnace is getting hotter and hotter, I'm gonna just start putting off cuts, seconds is like what we call it, on top of the furnace so that then the moisture dries out, evaporates, because if you put wet metal in a molten pot of bronze, you got an explosion. So I'm just gonna get another section now. Just get one of these bad boys. So you could just get old cuts, cut them up, and then we just pop them on top of the furnace. The moisture then evaporates out of this metal, and then we pop it in the, in the crucible, and then hopefully we don't get any explosions. So in order for us to pour our molten hot shells, we need to prep our sand pit. And what I've done is I've taken out the majority of the sand and I've put it in metal buckets. Key note, don't use plastic buckets. So when you put your bronze into your shells, the sand gets really hot. So then what you do is you obviously, to remove the shell, you get it out with the crane, or you can scoop it out with, uh, with buckets. If you use plastic ones, they just melt. From there, we've got our tools. You've got your drossers, which are basically implements to then scrape the slag, the impurities from the top of the molten bronze just before you're about to pour. So in order for us to get a really clean cast, we need to make sure that all the impurities are off the top, scraped off the top of the pot so that we get a really clean casting. So these are a trusty bit of kit because if you don't want to burn your hands putting metal into the furnace, you've got these beautiful cast iron tongs, all been hand, hand forged, put together. And this is brilliant for just picking up hot pieces of metal, and then you'll be able to put that in the furnace without actually burning your hands. And all around, just a really nifty bit of kit. Anyone that's starting up a foundry, I wouldn't start one up without one of these bad boys. So in order for you to actually be as safe as possible when pouring molten metal, it's a good idea to wear leather aprons or anything sort of heat resistant because it gets really in hot. It doesn't matter what you wear, you can wear an old welder's jacket, welding gloves, anything suede, leather, heat resistant. So I'm gonna wear this and I'm also gonna wear a, in fact, I'll just show you. You've got your knights at the round table. We are the knights that say knee, head gear. You've got your jacket as well for extra, extra protection. It may not look the prettiest, but it keeps me safe.
we have poured our molten metal into this ceramic shell. And as you can see, it's pulled to the top and it's slowly solidifying. It's pretty rapid for it to sort of cool down solid, but this is still probably around about 600 degrees. But what I love about this whole thing is that it originally started off as this ingot of bronze and we've melted it and we've poured it into the ceramic shell. And now once this cools down, the ceramic shell will pop off and then inside will be the thing that we want to clean up and weld together and then to finally patinate it. It's alchemy, baby, alchemy. So now it's slightly cooling down. You see this crack appearing. That's where the bronze is cooling. The shell's trying to fight it to hold it form. And as the bronze is cooling down, the shell is sort of losing the fight. And the shell starts to crack. And now you're left with this beautiful cast inside. <laughs>